hello everybody. Today's guest is actually Priyansh Agarwal, who is a second year student in IIIT Delhi, the same college that I go to. And uh, Priyansh is a candidate master on Code Forces with a peak rating of 2013. And uh, on Code Chef, he is a six star coder with a maximum rating of 2225. And if you type his name on YouTube, Priyansh Agarwal, you'll find a channel filled with CP videos with over 7.3K subscribers. And he has 51 videos at the point of recording this interview. And if you didn't know, these are actually some really good statistics for uh, someone who's just 20 years old. So hello, Priyansh, how are you? Hi, hi Rahul, how are you? I'm great. Yeah. So today Priyansh will talk to us about how he started his journey into corporate programming. So uh, first of all, Priyansh, when did you actually start programming? Yeah, so uh, when I was in class ninth, uh, there was a computer science course. I mean, there were electives and I took computer science in that. Mm -hmm. So we were taught Java in that. And yeah, that is the time I would say I started programming. It was not total programming. I would say it was like very simple things like for loops, while loops and right. all such stuff. But yeah, that was the time I started programming in class ninth. Right. And so in 10th and 11th, uh, in, sorry, in 11th and 12th, did you take uh, computer science as your uh, main course? With yeah, I took computer science as my, yeah, uh, as a course uh -huh. and I had C++ taught in that. Right. So yeah, uh, that was the time I did more programming right. and then I got into college and yeah, that was, you know, that was the time I got into CP actually competitive programming. So when it comes to CP, what language is best and why? <laughs> okay. So I, uh, I won't say that there is a particular language that is best for CP. Mm -hmm. It is like, uh, it is like, uh, you know, C++ is a preferred language for CP. So, you know, you would have like 80% of the people who are into uh, CP and they're doing it in C++. But I wouldn't say that Python and Java are, you know, in any way lesser than C++. They are just lesser in terms of, you know, uh, their execution time. I mean, they take up a lot of execution time compared to C++. Right. So if you talk about Java, it is uh, somewhat two or three times slower than C++. And if you talk about Python, it is almost five times slower than C++. Mm -hmm. So it is not like that, uh, you know, all, all of the people are doing it in C++ only. There are people who are doing it in Python and who are doing it in Java and are at a very great level. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but if, if you're starting out, I would say then, you know, you should uh, start with C++. It is a preferred language for CP. Right. So uh, just so you guys know, CP stands for competitive programming and we'll be using that as the, you know, short form in the rest of the video. So Priyansh, can you tell us which is actually more important, competitive programming or software development when it comes to building a you know, strong resume for top tech companies? Okay, so this is like a very debatable topic. Uh -huh. So both of them are definitely important if you have a mixture of both of them. If, you, you know, if you're good at something, like if you're good at competitive programming, then maybe you can build up a resume that is uh, more towards the competitive programming side and you can focus a little bit on the software development as well and you would have a great resume and if you think that you are more into software development and you like web development android development all, and all such stuff then maybe you can uh, you know build up very strong projects and what you can do is you can you know practice some of the dsa standard questions and again you would have a great resume in that case too Mm -hmm. So that is what I feel like you should do whatever interests you the most. You should do that more, I would say. Right. So for all the beginners starting, uh, what topics do you think are necessary for uh, CP? Okay. So if you talk about beginners uh, specifically, then, you know, the path is to first of all, learn a programming language, get familiar with its syntax, and then you can definitely jump into problem solving right away. And you can solve very simple problems that are, you know, maybe ad hoc. And what are ad hoc problems? Ad hoc problems are the problems that don't specifically require a certain, you know, a certain data structure or a certain algorithm mm -hmm. or certain predefined, uh, you know, things. So ad hoc problems are basically like puzzles. So you can get into that if you are familiar with the programming language. And uh, yeah, that is uh, what I would say a beginner should do in the very starting phase. But if you talk about topics specifically that are very important for CP, then there is dynamic programming. It is uh, it is like the most important topic I would say in uh, competitive programming. Then I mean, if you if you look at a contest, then there would definitely be a problem on dynamic programming in it. Right. Every contest I would say. 
and uh, then there is graphs and then there is trees so these two topics are like pretty advanced they are not seen in the very initial part of a contest if you have like five problems in a contest you wouldn't generally find these uh, graph and trees problem in the first three or let's say first two problems mm -hmm. and uh, then there is range queries definitely uh, i mean uh, how should i define range queries so range queries are basically like if you are given a certain list of numbers how do you process queries that are based on a range for example if there is a list and i tell you to find the sum from ith index to the jth index in this list then how would you do it efficiently like the naive way would be to iterate from i to j and just calculate the sum but how would you do it efficiently so then there are uh, things like segment trees fenwick trees and all these data structures that are used to process range queries efficiently right and what else is important i would say number theory is definitely important but if you are someone who's already from a mathematical background then you know you would definitely already have some basic knowledge of number theory and talking about the advanced concepts in number theory then you don't really need them in the very uh, you know uh, beginning phase like i said if you look at the first two or three problems they don't require so hard concepts Mm -hmm. so if you are already going into the level of solving the fourth and the fifth problem in a contest then that is the time you can refer to advanced concepts in number theory right and yeah that was that are for the topics uh, do you have to start with dsa before you know getting into competitive coding or do you have to do it after what is your suggestion on this and how did you do it right so obviously there are uh, two ways to do it either you can learn dsa first and then into then then get into competitive programming or you can you know just start competitive programming solve the ad hoc problems the problems that require basic observations basic logic and then whenever you feel the need that you need to increase your level that is the time you can get into data structures algorithms and uh, i took the second way i mean i just started competitive programming just like that i used to solve very simple logic based problems mm -hmm. and then when i felt that i need to in increase my level what i did was that i took a course from coding ninjas okay on competitive programming yeah so if i would have gone with the first way what i would have done is that i would have taken a course on data structures algorithm specifically and prepared that and then maybe taken a course on cp or maybe would have learned the cp concepts on my own mm -hmm. but what i did was i did not uh, you know consider dsa as very important at that point and i took the cp course directly so the major advantage that i had here was that the main concepts that were required in uh, cp were taught to me in that course and Uh, there are things like bsts binary search trees linked list and all of these things are very important for data structures algorithms knowledge but right. they are not that important from competitive programming point of view and if you take a course that is very dsa centric then you would be taught these topics and it would not really help you in cp mm -hmm. so what i would say is uh, you just get familiar with any programming language get into problem solving solve a bunch of few Uh, a bunch of easy problems a bunch of logic based problems hmm. that mainly just increase your logic and build up uh, your observation skills right right and then when you feel that uh, you are at a certain level where you need to solve the next problem in a contest and you need certain data structures for that right. that is the point you can get into data structures algorithms yeah makes sense okay so where do you actually recommend uh, you know studying all these topics that you previously mentioned what what are you know according to you the best resources available right so again there are two ways here you can either take a course that is you know maybe take a course from coding ninjas like me or you can take any other course as well so what a course does is that it presents to you all these topics in a very standard way right like you don't have to think should i learn dp first or should i learn graphs first you don't have to think about it the course structure will tell you what what should you learn first right and the other way would be to just you know go online and if you are good at googling and good at searching for stuff online then you should definitely go uh, with the second way mm -hmm. so if you talk about the resources that are available online apart from the paid courses uh, i would say there is cp algorithms there is a website called cp algorithms okay which has uh, almost all the cp concepts all the uh, concepts that are beginner and intermediate i'm not talking about very advanced stuff that is definitely not present in any of these websites you need to you know be mm -hmm. on a legendary grandmaster level to yeah. even study about them so uh, talking about the resources yeah you have cp algorithms as a website which presents to you all these stuff and you can get to a very good level just by you know studying all the algorithms and data structures that are available on that website apart from that there is geeks for geeks for uh, very common tricks like if you you know if you are solving a problem you have let's say a problem and you reduce the problem to a very small problem mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that problem maybe you know you know you can just search it on online and you would find the solution on of it on Geeks for Geeks, right? Okay. So you can definitely refer to Geeks for Geeks. Right. Um, apart from that, there is Code Forces educational section. I don't know uh, if they're posting more videos on it, but there has been already a lot of content on it, and it is pretty awesome. So you can check that out for sure. Yeah, and then there is YouTube. Obviously, there are a lot of channels, like my yeah. channel only. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not promoting it, but yeah, there is there are a lot of channels on YouTube. You can refer to them for uh, learning. There is learning the material. Right. So. on how do you actually improve your you know critical skills other than you know how you already stated to start solving problems how to improve that logic and critical skills thinking skills in order to perform better okay so like you know uh, it is more like maths if you look at competitive programming it is more like maths mm-hmm. you need to solve problems only then will you be able to you know identify patterns identify uh, tricks and form observations so all i would say is you know when you are familiar uh, familiar with the language you can start solving problems and you know you can start giving contests contests on all these online judges like code forces code chef at coder so you can pick any two or maybe uh, even a single one of them you can pick pick it and just start giving contests all the contests that come in line right and what happens uh, with this is that you will realize what are the type of problems that are asked and then you will be you know if you're if you even if you're not able to solve uh, even one problem in a contest after the contest when you will read the editorial you will realize that this problem was based on this observation or this trick and i did not know about this so i will you know maybe search online and get to learn about it by mm-hmm. just searching online mm-hmm. so that is the thing you need to maintain uh, uh, you know i would say maintain consistency when it comes to competitive programming and your problem solving skills will improve automatically right so how do you actually keep motivated at you know doing cp like it's definitely not going to be easy when you're uh, at you, when you're at that level like you, you do face mm-hmm. some problems at, along the way so how do you uh, you know act accordingly right so <laughs> talking about motivation you know whenever you have let's say a rating let's say i am at a rating of 1650 right so uh, i would look at my rating graph and i would see that maybe i can practice more and get to that 1700 mark you know just uh, improving your rating is one of the biggest motivations i guess in cp and apart from that you know uh, as we see uh, in india only there are a lot of companies that are hiring on the basis of strong cp skills mm-hmm. not exactly strong cp skills but i would say strong dsa skills and if you're already good in cp then that means you're already you know you would be definitely good in dsa as well so yeah that is another motivation for many people as i've seen it was a motivation for me as well when i was starting out so yeah these are the two motivations apart from that if i talk about my personal journey so when i got into triple it delhi i was introduced to this club called fubar and it was supposed to be like the very elite club in triple it delhi yeah so my aim that time was to you know just get into fubar anyhow mm-hmm. so there are basically two ways to get into fubar you can either uh, you know get to a level where your rating is 1700 in a uh, in on cold forces and you can and you maintain it for three three contests so that is one way to get into fubar another way to get into fubar is to you know just uh, come first or second in the programming contests that are organized by fubar right so my aim was to get into fubar by the first method mm-hmm. and yeah so uh, i tried a lot and that was one motivation for me to mm-hmm. yeah. keep doing cp right so did you ever get stuck at one point uh, with your rating and then you had to like you felt like how much effort regardless how much effort you're putting you're not getting the results so how do you you know deal with that <laughs> did you ever- right so it it definitely happens with everybody if you talk about any skill it it happens you at some point reach that plateau and mm-hmm. that is the point you realize that you know i'm not improving i'm putting in a lot of effort i'm not improving Mm-hmm. and this happened with me twice so the first time that it happened with me was the very initial stage uh, of my journey uh, that is the first 3 or 4 months so that was the time i was not improving at all my rating was going down 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 right mm-hmm. so the th- the major reason at that time was you know i did not know about these topics called dynamic programming graph trees i did not know anything about them so whenever i would see a problem that was you know based on dynamic programming 
the first thing that i would do was that i used to just apply simple logic and get to a very greedy solution i would code it up and then realize that this is definitely wrong because this requires covering all the cases and i don't know how to uh, you know do that mm -hmm. so that was the first time and how did i overcome that like uh, i would say taking up that course from coding ninjas definitely uh, helped me you know cover all these concepts and yeah that i mean that was the only thing that was lagging right i did not know these concepts yeah. i had a good logic that at that time as well but i did not know about these topics mm -hmm. so talking about the second time that this happened this was when i was at a rating of around 1600 mm -hmm. and you know my aim was to get into fubar so i had to get to 1700 somehow yeah, yeah. and then there were a series of contests like 10 or 12 Mm. I wasn't able to improve at all. My rating was going up, down, up, down, but it was never reaching seventeen hundred. Right. Yeah. So that was the time I was putting in a lot of effort. Like that was the time I put in the most effort in my journey, in my CP journey, mm. and it was not improving. And maybe the reasons were that I was uh, just under the pressure of getting into Fubar, and that was preventing me from, uh, you know, giving a good contest. So at the time, I don't know. uh there was nothing that actually i did to overcome that it just automatically happened because of the lot of effort that i was putting in then my rating just blew up it it went to 1700 and it then even went to 1800 getting I, me okay. from fubar into fubar elite directly <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> that's cool